been asked to help out a little bit with how these units and stress work out. So let's go back to the basic definition here of stress in terms of its overall concept of some sort of intensity of a force. Now that intensity is described as force over an, an area, which means that its units are going to be, of course, force over length squared every time. That's a key critical thing. So let's look at first US units and the typical ways we might be describing that, such as pounds per square inch, which is oftentimes abbreviated as PSI, or pounds per square foot, also common, which would be pounds uh, pound PSF or pounds per square foot. And then oftentimes these units are too small, that the magnitudes are much, much larger than that. So instead we'll look at kips per square inch, which would be KSI or kips per square foot, KSF. Right? And remember that one kip is equal to a thousand pounds. Right, so for the US units those are, are pretty common. Where you see these numbers commonly are going to be, you'll be in KSI units when you're talking about most steels, that will be the magnitudes are most convenient to describe in terms of KSF. When you're talking about soil properties you'll oftentimes either be talking about KSF or PSF um, they're going to be the same, it's just going to be an order, three orders of magnitude difference between the two. Likewise up in, in here for those two. Um, if you're talking about concrete, you'll oftentimes hear about 4,000 PSI concrete. That's a normal weight, normal strength uh, concrete. Uh, we have concretes that um, can be made much, much stronger than that. Uh, but typically high strength concrete start around the 6,000 PSI range. Whereas in terms of strength, the steels, <clears throat> these days, a relatively low strength is about 36 KSI. Um, we have steels that go up over 100 KSI, particularly for things like um, high strength wire cable, uh, that sort of thing. Right? And so that, that gives you a little bit of a sense of the, the range of these uh, values. Let's look at the, the SI system where things get a little bit different. Um, you know, the, if you're dealing with mass all the time, then the SI system is maybe a great one to work with. When it comes to forces, it's not usually quite as convenient. But in the SI system, the basic unit is called Pascal for anything to do with either stress or, or pressure. And a Pascal is, by definition, a Newton per square meter. Now, our cross-sectional areas of our structural members are not as big as one square meter. So this really is not a very convenient um, scale at all. So let's do a little units conversion and see how this might play out. All right, so a Newton per square meter is the Pascal. We'll usually abbreviate that as capital P, lowercase a. Sometimes people will do it as little p, little a, but that's probably your most common way that you'll see it. And let's consider that in one meter there is 1,000 millimeters. Of course to make that appropriate conversion here, again to have force over length squared, then we'll square that little conversion there. And so of course you'll have the meters squared, we'll divide through the meters squared here, so you have a Newton over, this is 10 to the third squared, that's where people usually make the mistake here, and then they won't, they'll forget to square the millimeters too, but you'll have Newton over millimeter squared, and that is the same thing then as 10 to the minus sixth Newtons over square millimeter. Right? It's a lot more convenient to talk about cross-sectional areas in the SI system in terms of millimeter squared than it is meter squared. That's for structural systems, structural members that is, that it, that's a more common kind of thing. But now note how this will begin to play out because this is actually a very small uh, kind of number that's running around. Well, you're going to see that uh, steels will have strengths on the order of 70 megapascals. So let's just deal with one megapascal and see how that would work out. A mega 
is then 10 to the sixth Pascals. And since a Pascal is the same thing as 10 to the minus 6 Newtons over square millimeter per Pascal, note, remember, our units can divide through like numbers. And we'll have 10 to the 6 times 10 to the minus 6, and that's just equal to 1 Newton per square millimeter. And this is especially convenient for structural calculations. Again, a lot of strengths of steels will be on the order of 70 megapascal or 100 megapascal, but a megapascal is the same thing as a Newton per square millimeter, and since the areas that we're oftentimes working with are far more conveniently expressed in terms of square millimeters in, instead of square meters, this is a very handy thing uh, to be able to work, at, work with. So two things I want you to get out of this little short video. One, maybe there's more than two things. One, overall basic dimensional units of stress, force over a length squared. When you're doing your calculations and you want to calculate the stress and you don't have that set of units at the end, you know there's a mistake someplace. It's got to be in there. These are not just units you throw down there. Okay, a lot of people will do that. Oh, I know it's supposed to be like this. So I'll just throw it in there because I must have gotten it right. But there's. You, if you carry through the units at every single step, it will reveal any potential mistakes that you're making um, just right off the bat from a dimensional standpoint. So that's one key thing to get out of this. Another one is just the, the common symbols that we use for the typical approaches that show up. That's the second part. And then a third part that people usually these days are not as comfortable with because they don't have as much experience. The calculators and the software tools tend to do so much of this for them so they don't have as much experience as just working like you see here, this very simple arithmetic way of dealing with these labels that are the units and not just the numbers. Right? So that's another big piece. Um, there's another one, I guess a fourth one is just the definition of Pascal which is what we use in the SI system. And then uh, finally, one little caveat here that I see over and over and over, people will not do this little part right here correctly. They'll, they'll square the meter part, but they won't square the number that's sitting here. So you've got to follow through that basic math. I don't even know what level that is, um, but it's a pretty basic stuff of how you work with numbers and units. And that gives you some sense here for at least stresses um, what we're working with here and that will maybe help you uh, do a couple of the items that you're not as familiar with here.